Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's CJ. I want to welcome you guys back to episode 16 of the JBJ 65 gallon refill. Now, if you are new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, notification bell to make sure you stay up to date on all the latest updates. You know, follow the playlist and try to get caught up on everything that's happening with this tank because I'm going to try to start ramping up these updates and get you guys fully in tune on all the trials and tribulations of this JBJ, which is turning out to be the most educational build that I've ever had. You know, so many different issues, which we're going to cover in this video because we have a new one. If you guys can see previous clip, everything was clean. In this clip, things are starting to get a little dirtier, specifically the sand bed. So that's the point of this video. You know, what the hell is going on with my sand bed? And what did I do to try to fix it? And unfortunately, what the outcome of that was. So another master plan gone wrong, but that's the entire point of my channel. You know, I always try to be truthful and honest, you know, about all the good, bad, ugly, you know, lessons learned, you know, success stories, whatever the case may be, that's pretty much what you're gonna get on my channel. So let's go ahead and dive into the topic of discussion, which is gonna be what is going on and the JBJ, what's going on with the sand bed, give you guys a close look at the situation. So as you can tell, sand bed definitely has some kind of brown algae of at least what I thought was algae growing on it at first, but then my mind started changing a little bit more because you know, this algae was too consistent. Wasn't sure if the sand bed was leaching something or if this was some kind of form of, you know, cyanobacteria or even worse, was this some kind of form of dinoflagellates? wasn't sure you know i don't have a microscope i personally have never really experienced this before in any of, any of my builds you know i started every single one of my builds with dry you know uh, uncycled rock uncured rock which in all those builds usually led to some kind of algae issues this is the first build that i started with what was live rock you know with using bottle bacteria you know you understand all the cycling issues i had in this tank for those that have followed this build so this is new, you know, this is a new issue altogether. And as far as what I know, identifying the difference between dinoflagellants and cyanobacteria was something that either a microscope can definitely help you with or just looking to see if there's the snotty bubble look with it. And from what I could tell, you know, just blowing this off the rock work and stirring the sand bed, I never really noticed anything that you know, gave me a clear picture as far as what it was. So it didn't look like dino from everyone else's examples. So I thought, hey, this is probably some kind of form of cyanobacteria. So how do you get rid of it? You know, cyanobacteria is something that usually is a result of, you know, some kind of nutrient imbalance in your system. You know, not enough export or too much export, whatever the case may be. So I wanted to get everything back online in the JBJ. And by everything, I mean the UV sterilizer, the algae scrubber, pretty much all the, nor the normal forms of nutrient export that I originally planned on this tank, you know, water purification, all those kind of things. I went ahead and got them back online and it did not solve the issue. So what else can I do at this point? Well, one of the things I didn't do in the past on this system was take the time and turkey base the rock, you know, and try to clear those things out. Unfortunately, you know, that's something that the lack of time did not allow me to do, but hey, we got time now, right? So I did go through and turkey base the rock, you know, clear out the sand and, you know, do my best to clear the algae off the glass, the back wall, and also did some changes to my roadie unit. You know, I did not replace the filters for a very long time, so I went ahead and swapped out all the carbon filters and, you know, the resin and all that good stuff and start mixing up some water changes. So we got fresh RODI water. You know, we have Ritz, uh, Fritz Reef Pro Salt. So let's go ahead and start exporting whatever else is in here that may be helping the cyanobacteria grow. At least that was my plan. You know, smaller water changes at first, trying to get away from those large influxes as far as the tank parameters, since I have corals in here and all those kind of things. So that was the original plan, but that didn't work either. <laughs> so here we go. First time ever using Chemi clean now from what i understand i mean i did a poll and it was like 90 percent of the people that have used this have had success uh, it's worked with getting rid of the cyanobacteria in their system you know of course you got to get rid of the things that was causing the cyano but this is like the great thing to use as far as putting the final nail in the coffin 
I've never used it before. You know, I understood that it is some potential risk as far as livestock and coral and all those kind of things. But as long as you use this the right way, you don't overdose your tank, you know, you aerate the water, all those kind of things. Normally, it was safe to use. So I'm not sure if anyone else watching has used this before. If you have, go ahead and hit the poll on the top right. Let me know if Kimi Clean worked for you or if you ended up having an issue after using it. Did it cause something else in your tank? Did it, you know, prevent something from happening? Did it kill anything? What happened in your personal experience? I care about hearing personal experiences, not what you've read, because, you know, what you read is, is what you read. I want to know what really happened to your tank. So, but let's go ahead and get this in the system and then hopefully, uh, hopefully, have that positive result that I'm looking for, which is a clear, you know, clean sand bed and no more of the craziness that's been going on over the last few weeks. Now, I do want to remind you guys that this video is kind of a, you know, 15 minute time lapse if you want to look at it that way. Random clips that I gathered over the last two weeks or so, you know, adding the Kimmy Clean, of doing the water changes and all of those things. They may seem like they happen within minutes of each other, we're really days apart or weeks apart. So, in this case, this is going to be day one and a half, almost two full days of having the Kimmy Clean in the system. You know, clearly I'm bubble scrubbing the tank. I normally did bubble scrub for, you know, nutrient export reasons and, you know, exfoliating corals and all those kind of things. But in this case, I did a 24 7 bubble scrub on the tank purely due to the Kimmy Clean. One of the main things that I kept hearing from anyone that's used it was making sure that you oxygenated your tank because of whatever chemical reaction happens from this, it does deplete your water of oxygen and it can kind of kill your fish out or livestock for that reason. So, you know, took the top off the skimmer, you know, let the bubble scrubbing take over and pretty much just kind of let the tank do its thing. Now, I didn't know if it was going to be an immediate response or if the corals were going to, you know, shrink up and shrivel up or if the sand bed was just going to go completely white. No idea. You know, everyone says that it worked on their system. I didn't know what to expect. I just kind of followed the instructions. Now, one thing I do want to share with you all is a small change I did to the rear compartment. You know, of course, taking the top off the skimmer because it's skimming like crazy, overflowing. But I also introduced some more filtration. So instead of just relying on the thick or coarse foam padding, I decided to add some of the finer filter floss, hopefully to remove any floating particulates or you know, algae, spores, or whatever the case may be. This is a way of getting around my system. And last but not least, I tried to address the flow issues in the tank. The frag racks on both sides of the glass were blocking a lot of flow. So I went ahead, took the time, and got these corals mounted on the rock work. I did make a separate video for this and kind of explaining my steps and my thought process on mounting the corals, but I didn't want to include that in this video. So make sure you're subscribed. We're going to cover this at a later date. So pair the recommended 20% water change on the Chemical Clean box. We're gonna go ahead and siphon the sand bed, clean up the JBJ, and dilute whatever's in the system, and try it again. And I say try it again because I didn't see any improvement on the sand bed. So, you know, this should have really clued me right away that I may be dealing with something different than cyano, but I gave it a second treatment. You know, the second treatment is actually still in the system right now. This is day one and a half or so into the second treatment of the Kenny Clean. As you guys can tell, the sand bed still has something on it. But at this point, I'm starting to get a little weary. I'm starting to think that I may have misdiagnosed the system or misdiagnosed the issue at hand. And that's exactly what happened, guys. So let's take a look. You know, as I showed you guys earlier in the video, that brown covering on the sand bed really didn't give you any clue that it was something so you know something else besides cyano didn't see any of the snotty bubble look or any of those kind of things but i'm not sure if it was the chemi clean or the additional water changes or you know the additional exporting or whatever the case may be but whatever was going on on the sand bed has increased exponentially meaning way worse i mean as you guys can tell it's not only just on the sand bed now it's starting to spread to the rock work to the Tonga branch, to all kinds of places, and it's starting to look like that snotty bubble look, also known as dinoflagellate. So, gotta tell you guys, this has been an experience to say the least. 
never had this before you know i was hoping this was not it when i first looked at this in the tank i was thinking hey kimmy clean is going to take care of this for me but it did not and i'm wondering did i misdiagnose this at first did i actually have cyanobacteria and then it turned into this you know after using kimmy clean after exporting and maybe lowering the nutrients too much in my system or did i only have thionals to begin with and I just picked the wrong form of treatment and that form of treatment has helped increase the likelihood of this, you know, getting out of control. Made the conditions more favorable for the dinos after the fact. Who knows? But at this point, I'm dealing with a new nemesis and this nemesis is probably one of the baddest, you know, ones in the system, uh, baddest ones in the hobby. You know, besides Briopsis algae, I'm thinking this is probably number two. So is this going to be the event that takes me out? Is this going to be the one that makes me tap out, say uncle, and just say to hell with it? We shall see. But I'll tell you guys, I just want to kind of share this experience with you all to kind of let you know what is happening with the JBJ, because this is the current condition of just trying to fight whatever this is. So let me know you guys experience dealing with dino flagellates. What'd you do to fix it? What'd you do to resolve it? In this case, for me, I'm going to have to do two things. First and foremost, I'm going to have to do the recommended change as far as what the chemi clean requires run some carbon to get the chemi clean out of the system then start trying to attack these dino flagellates doing my research you know i've heard a different you know slew of different options as far as dino eggs or raising your nutrients dosing phosphates and nitrates and you're going to be sterilizers you know blackouts metroplex i mean i've seen all kinds of comments and recommendations on my instagram not sure which approach i'm gonna take for trying to battle these dinos so at this point still researching but i just want to give you guys an update kimmy clean treatment gone wrong misdiagnosis i don't know in either case we got some work to do on the jbj so i'm gonna go ahead and cut this video here i've pretty much been rambling just want to give you guys a quick update so hopefully the next update is going to be good news with a solution and something maybe you guys can follow to kind of beat this in your own system so hey it's time to get out of here as always you guys can like comment subscribe you guys keep doing what y'all do y'all be easy and happy reefing peace